but uh, I'm just so glad it's skateboarding. It's been the one thing that came to me at the right time. It could have been anything I imagined, but skateboarding was what it was. That's why I love skateboarding to death. That's right when I found skateboarding. Like my friend showed me and I was like latched onto it because it was the uh, only thing at that time that was really fun and like my escape and I fell in love with it, you know? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. Do we have an episode for you today? My God. Oh, yeah. Before I do this, each and every episode is brought to you by All I Need. Uh, We are throwing the All I Need Summer Jam Skate Contest at Uxbridge Skate Park in Uxbridge, Mass. on July 10th. This is their first skate jam at the park. It's going to be a jam format, so that means three to four people Uh, skating for about three minutes it's more about what you land and not really focusing on the bales it's going to be awesome it's sponsored by all i need world industries vulture crew so you can come on out win some prizes from our great sponsors Uh, it's 50 dollars to enter you can sign up on our website at alllineedskate.bigcartel.com your 50 dollar entry fee goes directly to the skate park fund so if you come rip possibly win some prizes from our sponsors and you're also helping build new ramps at the park just by signing up guest pros donnie barley brandon westgate Corey goonan billy drown evan mancelillo kevin clem are all going to be there judging hanging out jumping on and off the mic with me going to be an epic day don't miss out make sure to sign up at allineedskate.bigcartel.com also Check out our online skate shop. There is four new t-shirts for pre-book, meaning you can put your order in now to lock in your size to make sure you get it. Usually we order small runs, but uh, I'm doing pre-book this time so because a lot of people missed out on our last t-shirts. We didn't have their sizes in. They sold out kind of fast, so uh, this is my way around that. So if you want to make sure you get some of our new tees, which I will put up here, so you can check them out. Our Defenders of the Deep tee our Built to Last tee, our American Legends tee, and our Fly High tee is available now for pre-book. Head to the website and lock in your tee. We have skateboards up there, all our graphics in sizes from 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, 8.5. Check out our Crusher Light Quint deck up there, our Evan Mansolillo deck, uh, Dragon decks up there, Fukuhara Bigfoot decks up there, Goonin's Abduction deck, Timmy Knuth. Uh, resurrection decks up there all types of graphics multiple sizes t-shirts hats hoodies get the merch support all i need and we support skateboarding Chew. let's call out the elephant in the room can you see how sunburned my face is i just went skating uxbridge skate park um with chloe and thomas and uh i had my hat on backwards and to the side and you can see like where the sun was hitting it and then Oh, man. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com and use the promo code AIN to get you 20% off plus free shipping when checking out. Check out the Performance Package 4.0 Luxury Grooming Kit features the Lawnmower 4.0 plus Weed Whacker Trimmers. Um, the Lawnmower 4.0 is the all new skin safe electric trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Anti Chafing Ball Deodorant. Crop Reviver, Ball Spray Toner, and the Magic Mat, Disposal Shaving Mat. Free gifts is the Shed, which is the Travel Bag, uh, Manscaped Boxers, Anti-Chafing Boxers, all types of goodies right there, man. And again, make sure to use the promo code AIN at manscaped.com. That gets you 20% off plus free shipping. This is the 4.0, and this thing works man play it's simple it's clean a good design and most importantly it works does not nick the nutsack it plows through that hair down there i don't care if you got the biggest afro or the longest hippie hair down there i don't care what type of hair you have down there the lawnmower 4.0 is gonna cruise right through it doesn't matter man i don't care what type of hair you have also i've been loving the weed whacker jamming this thing in my ears and in my nose where it grows like I'm an old man. I get it all hanging out and stuff. And uh, this thing just keeps it nice and tight, cleans me up. My lady's loving it. I don't look like a caveman out there just growing hair in all different places. It's insane, man. Again, check out manscaped.com 
And make sure to use our promo code AIN when checking out, and that gets you 20% off plus free shipping. We are also brought to you by World Industries. Head over to worldindustries.com. The decks are now all sold out. There's no more decks on the website, but we are stacked up with some t-shirts. We got about a dozen t-shirts, some hoodies, long sleeves. We also have sick Flame Boy and Wet Willie stickers on the website. We got shoes up there. You could check out my pro model shoe. A uh, hell of a deal up there right now. We got um, about four or five different pairs of World Industry shoes on the website. Um, yeah, again, check it out at worldindustries.com. My guest today reached out to me through Mr. Donnie Barley. He hit up Donnie after watching the Clyde Singleton episode where Clyde kind of called him out for some dirt from 20 years ago and rehashed it. Ricky said he just wanted to come on the show to say his side of the story and vent a little bit. I was super hyped. Both Clyde and Ricky have been goats in my eyes, man. They're both outspoken, entertaining dudes who also rip on the board. They're both legends, man. Kind of crazy that I'm in the middle of this, but uh, it's entertaining, man. <laughs> I say in the podcast that we should bring back uh, skateboarding boxing matches. I think Simon Wood Woodstock did that in the past at like a trade show. He like set up a boxing match. I think we should do it again, man. Let him slug it out. Put gloves on. No one's going to get hurt. And just let Clyde and Ricky just box it out and settle the beef like that. Both these dudes are fucking epic skateboarders and super interesting personalities. So, um, yeah. My guest today is Ricky O. Uh, this is one hell of an episode. I hope you enjoy. I know I've reached out to you in the past about having you on the podcast and we just, the stars didn't line up in the past, but I've definitely like snuck into the DMS or however I had to do it. Um, and then most more recently I had a podcast with Clyde Singleton and he dug up some shit from back in the day. And, uh, it basically led me and you talking again. So we ended up, uh, connecting again and it's something we got to address and talk about and you definitely want to, but, while we're here and I got you on the podcast, I'm really fucking hyped. Dude, I'm all yours, man. Hell yeah. So how I usually start this is I'm going to just throw like a few questions at you and then you can just handle it from there. So first is just like, when did you start skating? How'd you get your first board? And what was your family like growing up? And you can take that in whatever order you want. Uh, well, for sh I mean, dude, I was... I'm the youngest of four, right? And, you know, my older brothers, you know what I'm saying? Like, they they were able to speak Spanish when they were younger. Like, I am I came so late. I mean, my youngest of all my brothers, it's five years difference. You know what I'm saying? There's five boys? They were boys? born in Hoboken. Excuse me? Five boys? No, there's four boys. Oh, sorry. The, out of the three, it's eight years older than I, seven years older than I, and five years older than I. And then I was literally the last attempt for my mom to get a girl and <laughs> she, she, she didn't get it right so but it's it, it is different they grew up differently than i did you know what i'm saying um but you know they were born in you know mikey was born in you know brooklyn the other ones were in hoboken and i was born like more south jersey like in, in pemberton it was willingboro hospital but it's pemberton and willingboro where my godparents are and a lot of my cousins and pemberton yeah i mean they're I tell you what, the opposite of Medford, where I grew up, which is the very fucking woods. And it, it literally, I mean, I was a, one of two fucking Puerto Rican families. You know what I'm saying? And like, look, you know, I mean, I'm more white. You know what I'm saying? I mean, my mom's from New Hampshire. You know what I'm saying? But Hell yeah. uh, just Medford was the way it is. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I love where I grew up. It's very fucking jockish, very athletic. You know, I played sports all good day. I never really did organized sports. Uh, other than Little League Baseball, uh, which oddly enough, the, the other Puerto Rican, his name was Cheech. He was on my team. Um, but that was just met for. But my my mother's side is up in New Hampshire and Vermont. Right. So we visit them plenty. But I grew up with my dad's family, which is all Puerto Rican. Like my dad's one of the one of the few of the family that married a white woman. You know what I'm saying? But I grew up before. I got to Medford when I was eight in 1979. I was always in Willingboro and Pemberton, which is, you know, the, 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 you know what I mean? Like, 
like I said, it's the opposite of fucking Meffer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, all right. Or it might not be the worst in the world, but it's, it's it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So I what's was your, always sorry with, to cut you off, but what's your dad no, do sorry. for what's your dad do for a living? Well, my dad's passed away for a good number of years, but my dad is my life, like he did a bunch of different things, but my whole life he was a truck driver, he was a car carrier like my whole life. I mean, I used to, you know, I was young. I'd go in the truck with them sometimes. And, I mean, these fucking dudes travel. It's, and my uncle, my uncles and their friends and my dad, they were all were in a van club. I mean, I say that they were like in a van club where the vans had like paintings on it. Like they, they all won all awards and all that shit, carpet inside. <laughs> but my dad, like my dad is the second eldest, right? You know, my, the, the oldest, um, like for his brothers and sisters, the oldest one, my uncle Nestor, he never left Puerto Rico. My dad was born in Bayamon and like moved here when he was nine, right? So, I mean, my dad, my dad's darker, right? But most of my cousins, I mean, honestly, like my cousin Eli, who's a year younger than me, both of his parents are Puerto Rican. And he's whiter than I am, but that was just, it's just what it is, right? Yeah. We're you know, my mom, so we're a little bit whiter. My brother's kind of dark, stuff like that, right? But that's where, when I moved to Medford, I was always with my cousins. Like, my dad's friends are his brothers. Like, that's just Puerto Rican shit. I, you know what I mean? I, I, you know, just, it, it is what it is. I, it, I didn't mind it because my cousin Joe, Jose, but it's Jojo, he's my age. It was Jojo, me, and David, um, another cousin of mine, right? We were all born within a week of each other. Damn. So, yeah. So, like, me growing up and playing, it's like, it was us. So, like, you know, when we had these van fucking shit, we'd go. All my family is into NASCAR and shit like that, right? <laughs> like, I, they're just, dude, they're truck driving Puerto Rico. I don't know what the fuck they They drink Heineken. <laughs> that's what they do, right? That's so, awesome. we would go, like, to Dover Downs, and we were the Daytona. We were the Poconos and all stuff. But at Dover Downs in Delaware, when we go there, you used to be able to drive in and be in the middle of the track, right? Uh -huh. So all these trucks and uh, vans, it's like we would sit on top. But, I mean, we were kids. We'd bring our bikes and be fucking ripping around, just being little little heathens. Like, but, you know, not getting in trouble, but just but like we ain't sitting there watching these fucking fuck cars yeah. go round and round and round. And it's it really, it's loud as fuck. It's crazy, right? But that's that's what they were into. But that's that's... They were my friends when I grew up. And then when we moved to Medford, I still was going over my cousins all the time. But, you know, when I got into, like, into the 10s, 11, 12, right, you know, there's another family with four boys, too. One dude, Sean, he's my age. I went to school with him every grade all through life, right? He's one of my best. That family is my family. My brothers are older. I never hung out with my brothers. This family, which was right around the court, man, I used to run to his house. Did I did like 59 seconds one time. It was like I ran through the woods to get to this house. I was there every day. But Sean was my age. And Jason um, is two years younger. But that's who I grew up with. That's who I grew up skating with. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I had all these friends at school, right? You know, that I burned with and did all that shit with, right? But I skated. So me and Jason would skate. And most of the kids, you know, I skated with the Metro Lake kids, like, and I'm still friends with all these dudes. I mean, you might have met my buddy Skip. He used to be the team manager for Split. Oh, all right. right. But, and I lived with him uh, a couple times in the city, but you might have met him, to be honest with you, right? But, you know, Paul, Jason, all these dudes, these are people I skated with. But the more you go, you see people stop skating, right? Stop skating. So some of the younger dudes that was Jason's age, you know, I would skate with them. So we were Team Medford. You know what I mean? Got all the dudes from Vincent Town. They were team Vincent Town. It, you know, it's just stupid shit. But we were, dude, we skating was awesome, but we didn't know anything about it. What and what age were you? What age were you then when you got your first board? I got my first board on my birthday. I was 14. It's 1985. Hell the yeah. neighbor, my neighbor got one of the, he got an executioner. Like about I think his birthday was in April. And his parents surprised him with like this fucking like huge quarterback. I mean, like when I say huge, it ain't huge anymore, but then it was like eight feet and tight. I was better on it with my bike than my skateboard because we, we all raced bikes. Like my brother, my brother, two of my brothers worked at the bike shop in town. 
but all three of them raced. And my oldest was like number three in New Jersey. Like he, my dad used to drive him around. He, he was really fucking good, right? I only raced three times, to tell you the truth. But, um, you know, it was fun. But to buy a skateboard in South Jersey, you bought them at bike shops, right? So my brother Louis, who's the youngest of the three, he worked at Jeannie Schwinn. Um, and my first board was a town and country zoner, right? Nice, nice. And it was so crazy. What's so crazy is the way that I am now and how through skating, how I lived and how I just, I am a fucking skateboarder. Like, I don't give a fuck if you don't like me. You're never going to take it away from me. Like, you're never going to. I am the epitome of a fucking skateboarder. Like, the way my mind works. I don't care if I ever go skating again. Nobody can take uh, it from me. Oh, I know that, but My man. first board was a town and country zoner, right? And my second board was a brand X weirdo. And dude, you know, remember when you started getting and you started realizing like some real shit? Those two fucking boards were fucking whacked. Like, why the fuck am I right? But I loved them. Matter of fact, my first board was also my fifth board. <laughs> like the same one. Damn. Because you did you didn't really wear them out. You know what I mean? And you, you know, you did trade bullshit with your buddies. But literally, my first board, that fucking town of country zona, was my fifth board. I actually have not the same colorway, but some dude dropped it off at Sub Zero many years ago, and you know Shane, who owned the shop, he just gave it to me. Right, and it's it's in my basement. It's a piece of shit, but it it was my first board, just a different colorway. But it's funny how like we're real fucking skaters, dude. Like I look at you, I know what you've done in your skateboard. I know you are a real amazing skateboarder, but you're a real skateboarder. Those boards are ridiculous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the way we know now, like it's like that, you fucking put on your Smith fucking gloves, get some skate rags, you know what I mean? And like go skating on. I even had a Walker Nightmare board. You know how fucking stupid that is? Like the <laughs> board that looked like a dick. Yo, but I had purple anodized Indies on that board. Oh, and God. that, that, dude, that was something else. I'll tell you, man, that, that, those were like, they were hard to come by, especially where I, but, my brother worked at the, at the shop, but until this, I think it was called Splash, before this shop opened up in Medford, you literally can only get it at bike shops. You know what I'm saying? Like you could do the mail order stuff and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I think I bought my first set of bands probably was from like, it might even have been from Intensity, to tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? The, the dude who eventually owned Silver Star First Division Capital and Nicotine. Like oh, that's intense. Silver Star. I and it might have been called it might have been called something else before that, right? But since I was the youngest, when I was 14, like at that time, my, my mom had a shore house. It was a trailer in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Right? It was on the bay side. So boat takes you five minutes to get to Dewey Beach, right? But you gotta drive all the way around. It takes a fucking half hour to get to Rehoboth. And Rehoboth is like I don't know, dude, I, literally, it's by the gayest beach on the East Coast, to tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? And back then, you know, I don't give a fuck now, right? Yeah. But back then, I'm like, whoa. You know, like the, the little motels that were next to the gay bars, they were called butt huts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nice. I, it is what it is. I mean, it wasn't my name, but it is what it is. But that's where, in the summer, I couldn't stay home. My mom, my parents wouldn't let me stay home, right? My dad worked all the time. My mom loved to go down there and literally do fucking nothing but read these fucking, like, I don't know about, what's, what's a Fabio, the fucking dude with long hair? Yeah, like those yeah. Fucking books. Like a romance novel? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think she, that's the shit that she was into. But, <laughs> dude, she was fucking at peace there. I mean, she had four boys, you know what I'm saying? By the time I came around, you know, I fucked up plenty. But by the time I came around, my brothers have already done some shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> one brother wrecked my dad's fucking vet you know what i mean my other brother wrecked this thing and so you know my mom didn't tell my dad everything when i got in trouble you know what i'm saying but at that age i wasn't able to stay home so i was always at the shore and that's where i started learning to skate a, a little bit i mean a, a little bit i mean when we first started me and jason I really i i did the boneless first and he did like the little burden slide on on the ground but we had like tic tac contests, Dope. literally, like on rough ass, rough ass ground that we didn't realize it was so rough until we started getting, you know, as you know, a year down the road, you know, we started getting the vision blurs that are really hard. Yeah, and we're like, fuck, dude, this fucking sucks. We had no, we didn't even realize that 
it was the shit that we were writing that was making it fucking that way. But yeah, um, that's honestly, I I grew up in the woods. Dude, honestly, it's I brought people to, to where I grew up, and honestly, dude, I mean, Roger's been over there. Plenty of people in my house. They they don't even understand how I even let alone get to where I did it skateboarding. But like, well, how that, the fuck did I skate? You know what I mean? Like, that's my question. That's my next question. Is like, how do you go from tic tac in and like? just dicking around in the woods on a skateboard like where how did it lead you into skate shops and sponsorship i mean did I, I rode bikes i mean my all my brothers were it had motorcycles my dad wouldn't buy me a two-wheeler he bought me this full wheeler you know i had a kawasaki bayou a 185 no uh-huh. rear shock so every time i took it out to the pits because we live in the woods you can get to the pits right yeah i'd be <laughs> jumping and when you land it bends the axle right <laughs> yeah. and we had a, we had like what was called the big red it was a Honda Big Red. It's like a, it's a farm type trike, but it's a big fucking thing. That came first, right? And the first day I rode that thing, I know I was a little bit wet out. And I just rode it just, dude, right around, like just up the street. I went to turn around and say, what's up to the, it was like the dude, the paper boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just want to say what's up. But my foot slipped off the peg, right? And with trikes, with brand new wheels, it actually, if it gets your heel, it takes you. That thing took me under and the metal peg. I, I mean, I, I have a big scar right here. Because honestly, I needed stitches. But dude, I wasn't about to tell my parents that I did that on the <laughs> first day. Literally, right? <laughs> yeah. I hid that for a while. And when they ever found out, honestly, because we live in the woods, right? There's holly bushes and shit like that. I told my parents that when they finally saw it, I told them I rode my bike through a holly bush, right? <laughs> now, years later... You know, my dad called me out. You know what I'm saying? Like, he made fun of me, meaning, like, he knew that I lied, but he didn't, he, he, whatever. But it was years later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was right before Christmas of, it might have been when I, it might have been the same year, like, like 85, but it might have been 84 that he came down for Christmas and gave me a black helmet. He goes, hey, it's the same color as your motorcycle, right? And that black motorcycle was in the back. So when I first started skating, I still rode my bike. I motorcy- you know, I did the motorcycle shit and I skated, but skating just took over. Like, it's just all we did. Really, like, look, when I started burning is I started skating when I was 14. I started burning when I was 15, right? So all the dudes from school that weren't skateboarders, that's what I did with them. And then I always went skating every day. You know what I mean? And then you start getting, you go down from Mefford, you go to Mefford Lakes, you know, because Mefford Lakes, the dudes are my age. In the beginning, when I first started skating, they were the good dudes, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Um, and then you go from Mefford to Mefford Lakes, but then you go to Vincent Town, you know, then you go to Marlton, then you go to Cherry Hill. And then you, you just, as you get better, you just expand and you, you start getting known. And then there was one shop that was, uh, I think it was called Rad. It's called Rad, right? Um, now I've probably been skating two or three years by now, but this dude ultimately is the dude who owned BBC in the city that I'll, we'll pop, we'll get there. Right. Yeah. But that's how I met that dude first. And he had like an open tryout, literally an open tryout. Like it's so stupid, but we had open tryout <laughs> and I, I got sponsored. That's, that's how I got sponsored. Um, no, that's fucking he, sick, Ricky. Open tryouts. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Dude, it was literally, and, and it was it, me and, and, it, Andrew Craig has had a magazine, has a photo or two in a magazine, you know, in the, I don't know if it's the Spitfire video, one of our videos, right? In the beginning, there's a love tattoo on someone's arm, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you look, you right? That's my buddy, Andrew Craig. He lived in Voorhees, but we battled that day, right? And that's when I met him. And then, you know, I, so this couple of years, I started driving. I would go pick him up. We'd go to city. And, you know, start doing all that stuff. Uh, but that's how I got, first got sponsored um, by a shop. You know what I mean? Um, but, you know, and I, I love the dude who owned it. He's just, he had all these ideas. He was, he was great. Like, honestly, how I even knew they were having an open contest is I was at the mall and he came around fucking handing flyers to all the kids. Yes. Literally, that's how I fucking found out about it. Um, yeah. No, it was that's it was like pretty, a bat, that's like a after school movie skateboard tryouts battle. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it was pretty ridiculous. I, before that, I did get to see like my first demo and the second demo, right? The one was Pear Wheelander, right? At like at I Goldberg's, but that 
surf skate shop that opened up Medford, they had uh, John Grigley and John Lucero. What? And there was like these two amateur kids that fucking killed it too. Well, I think one was JT and one was Webb or whatever. But there was also uh, a couple good kids from like Morristown um, that I eventually knew. And it was crazy because you can't be cool to dudes until you at least get good as them or better than them. It's kind of yeah. weird how skating was like back then. Um, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you, you had you just kept on going. But we had a lot of contests. You know, a lot of people had contests like in parking lots and stuff like that. Um, like the one photo that I did send to you, right, with my shirt off. Yeah, I yeah. do. I don't, I don't really, I don't, I don't really take too many photos with my shirt off, man. But <laughs> you know, I, I was six, seventeen, eighteen, or whatever. I think I was still a senior when with that. But um, that was at a contest, like in this fucking parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, huh? and it, it was awesome. Right? It was so much fun to tell you the truth. You know what I mean? Like I, since I grew up in the woods, there was mini ramps, so I I could skate tranny uh, and honestly i i don't think i've ever skated kerfoot's mini rap not fucking blazed you know what i'm saying like i learned how to skate that way you know what i mean um but that's how it kind of starts and then you just you progress and progress you know what i mean yeah um, and the metro lakes dudes they used to, they went to philly um well before i i ever did you know what i mean um there was this dude named jeff ladd that is a little bit older than us but the metro lakes dudes how they started skating was because of that dude and that dude was pretty good that's how they started going to philly um and i don't know what year 88 maybe before i drove we had to skate like literally it's 15 minute bike ride from mefford where i live to mefford lakes right yeah but it's a 45 minute skate <laughs> so you had to catch the bus at 6 45 in the morning to go to philly it takes like an hour or whatever right it dropped, it dropped me off at uh, um, Sixth and Arch because Afro is at Seventh and Arch, right? So Sixth and Arch is where it drops you off. And you take the bus home at 5.30 at night, but you caught the bus like a couple, actually a couple blocks away from where the municipal building is. And it was crazy because you skate all damn day. I do get cramps like crazy on the way home. Um, but that's, like the first time I started going was was that way, and I don't know what time that I met Roger um, up in like West Philly. Just he was skating down the street, and it's a, it's a spot called Montague. It's a little stupid bank with a yellow curb on it on top. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if you remember Roger's video part uh, in Troops of Tomorrow, I don't know if you do, or you don't, but he he goes through you know those those fucking wooden things that go down at a parking garage. Yeah. He hit it and broke it. <laughs> and then he starts skating this curb thing. That that is where I'm that's where I kind of met him. Um and I think he was, I think he was he might have been 24, maybe. I think Man. he's six or seven years older than I am. You really? know what I mean? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. No, Roger, Roger, Roger was a man and he was huge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but just like how you, I, I, you have friends, I'm sure, that you skated with when you were younger. And as you continue, right, there's a lot of people that stop. Yeah, but you yeah. love it. You love it. So you continue and you move on and you got a new group of people you skate with, right? For sure. I'm sure Rod, that Roger had to go through the same thing like that. You know what I'm saying? And the way he skated, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know, when Rasul and Stevie and Terrence, right, they're, they were little kids. Before they started knocking on his door for, like, used boards and shit like that, Roger, I don't know how many people he really skated with. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, like, honestly, a lot of times I would see him, you know, if I was, like, up on, like, JFK or something like that, you, there's one spot right before you get 30th Street Station. You can look down. You know, I remember, dude, one time he was just skating. Like, I know he was skating to love. I know he was, right? But he was skating through this parking lot. And, then, you know, he would do, like, just a fucking you know the 180 and then the my dick little shove it fucking thing you know this isn't <laughs> pop shit back in the day you know what i'm saying this is like little slider shove it what right? you call it my dick yeah isn't a my dick when you go fakey right and you do a caballero <laughs> i never heard that that's awesome though <laughs> oh, dude. i did there's so many names back then. you know one of my favorites you know lemon meringue pie no dude no you know you know uh um, you <laughs> know dan true. zimmer yeah you know yeah. dan zimmer right i think yeah, I know dan zimmer 
Well, all right, fair enough. Um, but he was pretty fucking good skater, really. Hell yeah, like, right? Hell yeah. But I think he had a sequence in Transworld, and I believe the lemon ring pie was <laughs> um, the half cab to blunt to pivot, either coming forward or coming to fake. I think it's coming to fake. I think you do half cab blunt, pivot to fakey. And I believe that was lemon ring pie. It, that was skating was just so unique and just fucking awesome. These just fucking just made up fucking names for for things. And I think the, you know, if you did a half cab blunt, right? Half cab blunt to fakie, and then there's a half cab blunt and come all the way around forward. Yeah, yeah. One of them is called Hellbound, and the other one was called uh, uh, I forget. I don't know which one's which. You know what I mean? But it's just just a bunch of fucking names. You know what I mean? It, I, it was so creative. It's insane. You know what I mean? I was in a a Thrasher video. I'm not gonna remember which one, but. Someone on the internet. Like the know. early ones? Like not the on the road type shit, right? Truth Hurts or... It might have been like you know. play, playing in traffic. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, I think it was that one. But uh, someone said on the internet, I don't know if it's true, but they claimed that I was the first one to do this trick on video. It was half cab blunt on a mini ramp and then like and then like half cab flip in. So like continue, like a half cab blunt, half cab in, but with a kick flip in there. No, and, the uh, kick flip. Yeah, it's like a and lemon, they, they said, lemon meringue pie well, times two. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the lemon meringue pie does the pivot. Back to fakey. It, it, yeah. I, it, I, I'm a, it's the hellbound, but you do it with a fucking flip. Um, oh, shit. Hellbound? You know who? Fuck yeah. I think I think half cab, blunt, and coming forward, I think it was called a hellbound. Right? Kick flip, but hellbound. With hellbound the kick flip. Kick flip. But it, 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 I, seriously, if you fucking did it first, you get to call it whatever you want. You can call the fucking shit shit. Shit, I mean, shit, whatever you want. <laughs> I, I'm claiming, I'm claiming it, dude. Might not be true, but fuck it. But you know who? Like one of the one of the fucking insta fucking dudes, man. Is a lot of the, those dudes out there? The MBDs, yeah. MBD, whatever. Yeah. Like they, they. I think it's that one where they like try to fucking like sort through all the shit to say when shit, and and they're not always right. But dude, I think that's they I mean, count that claim. You have to give them a lot. You have to give them a lot of credit because. I mean, I, I do a lot of research. I do a lot of stuff anyways, right? But yeah, these dudes, like, they're on it. And if they're off by whatever, you know what I'm saying? And they're, if you, if you've ever been on it and you, and you read when they're like, they're a little bit off. Yeah. I mean, they're fucking like, I don't know who they are, but they're so fucking, they're, they're gracious. They're like, they don't, they're not like, oh, fuck you. You're going to call me out. They're like, thank you for telling me that if it's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, but that's actually that's the, the account. That is the account that actually posted that of me. And in the comments, Someone oh, was well, there like, you go. yeah, someone in the comments was like, I don't think he was the first one. And they were like, cool about it. They're like, well, send us video proof then or something like that. Yeah, I mean, they're not fucking judging jury. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? But look, <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, if they said it, it's that's they try. I don't know. I don't even know who else I would say, like, would know better. Yeah, personally, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because clearly you look at it. They really fucking they dig, dig, dig. You know what I mean? And I I, when I moved to the city, I stopped. I was I was really good at fucking skating training. I, I mean, honestly, I got sponsored by Z for skating mini ramp. They didn't even know I could skate street. That's pretty fucking funny, dude. By who? Like, honestly, by Z Products is my for well unabridged. These dudes from Upper New York, right? Okay, that was my real first one. You know what I mean? Like blank boards. That you know, like remember naked skateboards? Yeah, yeah. Well, they would get blank boards and, and make shapes, right? But they saw me at a contest in where Tim O'Connor's from Morristown, not Morse, but Morris town. Right. There's two yep. of them. And at this contest, they were like, yo, can we sponsor you? And I got, it, it was nothing crazy, but you know, they, they paid for me to go to New York. They picked me up at fucking Penn station and they live like right out of, uh, I don't know. And I, you know, these two dudes, I feel bad for not remembering the names, but um, it's, it's near white plains. Right. And when they brought me there, there was like a Saturday night thing that, dude, every skater from all the towns around it would meet near this mall in this parking lot. That day, I met Drake Jones when he was like, I don't know, dude, he might have been 12, right? He's always been smooth, you know what I'm saying? But he was like a little kid. But the dude who fucking was killing it that day was Billy Backer. Honestly, yeah. dude, he flew around. I think he was sponsored by Airwalk, too. You know what I mean? And this is like the, these beginning days. But my real first sponsor, um, I think Bruno De Silva. I don't know. You remember the playground? Yeah, I do. Dude, honestly, I live pretty far away. But me, Bean, and Joe, we went there a lot. 
like a lot for a little while. I used to battle Jim Gagnon all the time, dude. Uh, all Jim the time. Gag- Fuck yeah. And, yeah, all the time. And Donnie, my man Donnie, Donnie was good, but he was just getting started. He's smooth, but he was just getting started. He, <laughs> he wasn't Donnie that we know. And it was a fucking, there was some rippers actually at that fucking park. Bruno tried to get me on shut right before um, I took the bus to California, right? I met this kid randomly at the skate park. He's like, hey, if you're ever coming to California, hit me up. I took him up on it. Took the bus, three days, and he lived in Redondo, right, right near Torrance. Um, all those spots that are in the, the World Industries video, right? Yeah, yeah. Like Burl Banks. Yep. You know, that flat bar that Max Evans has that sick fucking front side feeble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, a lot of spots. Man, I did. I, I skated with day one when he was a little kid. It's funny because he posted something a while back and I hit him up. I'm like, yo, is that that spot? I said, I know you don't know because you were a little. He was a little kid, right? Yeah. And I asked him about the spot. Dan Paterka used to kill that spot. It was just like a little bump over a hydrant near school. But there's a parking lot where like double sided curves you skate too, right? All that stuff was right in Redondo and the Galleria Mall, you know, where Gons does that long ass front side. Yeah. Um, board side. He also does that fucking 270, you know, like, like fuck real shit before, before anyone knew what the fuck people were doing. Right. Yeah. That mall. Um, I skated that all the time. This is when I learned like, you know, Jeremy Klein. I mean, really, I, he was a really good fucking skater, but, but I mean, he's, he seems kooky to me personally. But when I was there, he, <laughs> I was told he don't like to skate in front of people. He would only skate the gallery mall like at three in the morning or something like that. Right. <laughs> it was just weird to me. And it just, it's just, you know, I mean, he could be the best dude. I, yeah, I'm not saying it. He just, just hearing that. And it's a shame. You know what I'm saying? Because honestly, yeah. when we get it, when we get into what we get into a little bit later, it's a little bit like that too. People hear fucking bullshit and they make fucking assumptions. You know what I'm saying? Without actually meeting somebody. But granted, Jeremy Klein wasn't on a lot of videos and it's kind of, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I, I'm saying? I but he Jer- was a fucking good skateboarder, dude. Yeah, I met Jeremy when I wrote for Birdhouse. Wait, wait, wait. When wait, wait. I for Birdhouse didn't, and- remember, remember, didn't I fucking tag you? Didn't I say something in a comment? I think was so. that you right next to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, um, no, no, no. What was I the was video? Like, it was a documentary. No, it no, it was like he was talking at a, do- yeah. like a you were at a restaurant. Yeah, And I yeah. saw you and I hit you up. And I'm like, yo, I was like, is that you? Oh, the man who sold the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that was sick, dude. Yeah, I met Jeremy and he was cool. He was cool, but I was a young kid, so he was kind of a dick to me because he just that's his attitude is like he's on his computer drawing his cartoons and playing his video games. And like, yeah, yeah cool. He's guy. Jeremy fucking. Yeah, he cool guy the shit out of me a lot of times. But then he'd have his moments where he was cool. So I kind of liked him as a persona, but I never really got to know Jeremy. <laughs> um, well, yeah, well, it sounds like his persona sucked. Honestly, like that's what I'm hearing. You know what I mean? But you were a kid, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, I mean I was I know East Coast, but you know, you're not arrogant as I am, as you know, <laughs> obviously. I'm like, yo, dude, come on now. But I was a little kid too, and I, you know what I'm saying? Like I, you know, you know, I became just because Philly's fucking gnarly. It's like fuck everybody, you know what I mean? But and plus I have three older brothers, dude. That, that really stem that really fucking that makes a difference. You know what I'm saying? So, my brothers used to beat the shit out of me. Honestly, it's just, I'm the, I'm, I was the young, I could do whatever I want, but I had three older brothers that, you know, kind of, my, my brother Raymond used to take me over to his buddy's house and I had to fight his, his, his little brother. <laughs> yeah. That'll yeah, give like, you I'm an like, attitude. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, dude, you know what I'm saying? But it, it is what it is. It's no biggie. You know what I mean? But, um, but when I went to California, right, he lived in Redondo it was him and his mother, and he had a sister named um, – his, his name was Cameron, right? His sister's name was Barry, right? Um, I was out in California for like a month and a half, right? I stayed with him for a while, and then my mom had a good friend that moved to California, right? Yo, I your, parent, go- your parents were just fine with you up and going to California like that? Everybody was well, fine? I mean, at, at this point. Fuck it. <laughs> at this point, I, I, I mean, this point, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah, yeah, I mean, really, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, I'm the youngest, um, but I was, you know, fuck. I, I mean, I'm driving to fucking Connecticut like every other weekend. I love the playground, dude. I, yeah. I mean, I love it. And I, I used to go to cheap skates all the time. Honestly, I used to skate little mini ramps where I grew up. Right. And I could skate mini ramp, but I had to learn how to skate mini ramp to six foot at cheap skates. That's where I learned it. And dude, when you watch fucking Barker, Rob Crow. Ooh. Ooh. Um, the Sigfus brothers, dude. Like, I, 
eventually when Barker and all those dudes left and I still was going, it, I actually skip with Jay Sigafus all the time, right? Like, and he's a powerful, gnarly dude. And Sean Miller's on the vert ramp making noise. We would try to make noise with our tail slaps. So the vert dudes would see us, you know what I mean? Like, it was awesome. We drank, burned. It was, Chief's case was fucking, was great. Those dudes, some of the best mirror skating I've ever, it is from there. Like, Barker is one of the, Seriously, one of the best fucking mirror skaters I, I've King, ever seen. King. And I, I'll tell you what, have you ever seen Rob Crow skate? Dude, for a, I, I, you know, because it, where, where they're from, a lot of those dudes fucking got drunk all the time. I never really got drunk and went skating. Like, I, I, I burned every day, but I didn't drink and go skating. I'd fall, right? Yeah. Those dudes drank a lot. You know what I'm saying? But I'll tell you, dude, there was a, a stretch. Barker was always fucking king to me dude and dune i you know dune was pretty awesome when i saw him there too right rob crow for a week literally had to be the fucking god of mini rough skate it was a, it was incredible like he he like he was better than barker it, it wow. really that's tough if you ever seen barker barker has the his feet like his feet are like like his front foot is so far down and he's so fucking dude it's, it was actually incredible honestly i benefited um because I'm a skate rat and I fucking loved it, right? And I, you know, Mike Kepper was awesome too. Mike Kepper was more like fucking, you know, he would do he blast fucking alleys like fucking crazy, right? Yeah. Barker was just fucking just outrageous. Rob Crow was incredible. Dune was amazing. He was Mr. Lippity Dippity, like honestly, like he killed the 5-0 fucking lip slide, Smith reverts, and all, you know, and he had to pivot to fakie on the extension for a venture ad way back in the day, right? Tell you truth. Derek Rinaldi was fucking when the shut team came there one day. Derek Rinaldi was like, he he was different. Like he's skating switch. He was doing weird shit, which yeah. was so sick. So that 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 helped me a lot. And I was still like this minaret fucking kid. And so when I went out west and I was staying with this woman that's as a friend of my mother's, right? She felt bad for me because she wasn't taking me anywhere, right? Because I didn't know where to fucking go, but there was a skate park called Lip Slides in East LA, right? Sick. She had a friend who had like a um, like a medical transport fucking company. I don't know, whatever, right? But she had that dude have one of his employees drive me to the skate park every other day. <laughs> My first day there, I skated, and what's that? What's that old dude, man? Bill Door. Oh hell yeah! Do you know who that is? I know of him. Yeah. Well, he was there, right? You know, he, yeah, you know, he, if you did, I don't, I don't know, right? So at first, you can think like, oh, all right, dude, you know, and he touches little kids, right? Yeah, yeah. But he's just a fucking fanatical skateboarder. You know what I'm wait, saying? I just wait. What I, do you mean? I, I apologize touched, to anybody. Did he, he did. touch I little kids? No, dude. I, I apologize to you. I apologize to anybody else. I'm just saying to you, when you first see him, that's. What you kind of think? Oh, you know what okay, I'm okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, know if he did it. Then I apologize to anyone, but that, that's not. Nah, just, but that's I what get he it. fucking look like. Dude, hey, people, look like. people. But look he was like so that. fucking psyched. <laughs> yeah. He's actually the one. The Z team. Some of the Z dudes came, and George Wilson, who's an awesome dude, right? Yeah. George Wilson came. Bill Door told George to watch me. That day, George gave me this fat fucking box with everything in it because they they did they did German bearings. They did OJ wheel, speed wheels, right? Yeah. Uh, these were the fattest boxes I ever got with Z because it was like everything was in it, right? Uh, but that first day, and like I said, I got sponsored for Skating Minute. And in my video part, you know, for me, like, I like consistency. and I like to just go, 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 right? So yeah. my video part in the Z video, all that's fucking edited. And I pretty much could do almost all of that in one run. <laughs> it's one and line. It, and it, and, it, and it, bothered, it bothered me a little bit oh, because I, I I had no control. Uh, I had no control of music, you know, because when I get older, I'm like, dude, I'm fucking. I know what I want to project to people. Right. But I had nothing, no say, whatever. Right. So I had some weak song. Right. Yeah. And um, I, I had an amazing time. I mean, I met Fabian. You know what I'm saying? Hell Marcel yeah. Johnson. I, I met Todd Bakley, right? Yeah. Um, I used to keep in touch with Todd Bakley in the in the very beginning because he, you know, he he's from Nebraska, right? Um, and it 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 was awesome. You know what I mean? Like, so I got to skate some of those spots back then, 
And then I went back to Redondo for a while to finish my stay. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when I came home, I remember most of my buddies, like Jay Sigafoos, I remember Jay Sigafoos, he was kind of pissed when I came to Cheapskates and I was riding Z shit. He wasn't yeah. happy. Like, they, they were, yeah, they, everyone was kind of like, dude, you're too good for that. What the fuck are you doing? But I'll tell you, dude, I've always been loyal. Z was always fucking nice to me. George Wilson was fucking awesome. I did ride the trucks for a year and then I didn't. And when I didn't, because prior to me telling them I'm, I'm riding Indies, I was at Woodward and, you know, uh, Deerdick, Petrie, like they came. I was there for two weeks, right? And then that was one week. And Danny Way, because remember, and the Plan B video and knock him on his helmet and all that shit, uh, right? A, yeah. But Danny Way and Mike Carroll were there. And I'll tell you, dude, that's when I got Mike Carroll. I only had, I had two autographs, right? One was Tony Hawk on my Illuminati board from Australia that my buddy was trying to sell it. But Tony Hawk, you know, he's, Tony Hawk, he's, he's like, he's a god, right? He's just signing away. However, he got my board. And when the dude brought it back to him, I'm like, oh, I'm not selling this. This is mine. Like, like Tony Hawk signed my board. Uh, this is, there's nothing, there's not, there's no other board that's like that. That Illuminati board was limited, right? And then you got this fucking dude. You know what I mean? Like, this dude's fucking signature. And remember when Carol had the backside Smith in one of those, like, uh, like the, the, the Capitol building in SF. And it's a lot of words, a lot of red border. And he's doing a backside Smith. Yeah, yeah. When he was there, right? Look, I'm not saying I know Mike a lot. But when I was there, I, I talked to him every day. He was, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's an awesome dude. That, that's it, right? But because I skated with him every day, right? He wouldn't fucking sign it for me. I had to oh. get one of the little kids to get, get him to sign it for them and he gave it to me that's how a, i got it what a dick uh no he, no he wasn't a dick he this is how he this is how this is how, how he's like i'm he's a, a dick, dick. <laughs> he's like i'm skating he's like i'm skating you every day dude like like you're good like like he's like mod modest like he's amazing he's forget about amazing he's those motherfuckers are up there right but i got it right <laughs> so but when i was when i was there right no shit every single day that Mike Carroll and Danny Way were there. Mike Carroll wrote for Venture. Danny Way wrote for fucking Indy. Every single day. I'm not, there's not a missed day. Every single day, they gave me trucks. Like, I couldn't take them, right? But they fucking gave me, like, they put trucks in my face. Like, they're like, dude, you're, you're too good to ride for this shit, right? And I'm like, dude, but they're, they're, I, they're loyal. I mean, I'm, I'm loyal. But I was like, I don't want to ride those trucks. So I called Z when I was there and I'm like, yo, can I just not ride these fucking trucks? I said, do you understand what it means to have Danny Way and Mike Carroll like push trucks in my face? Because for one, let's be honest, they knew better. Yeah, they knew better. They knew I should not be riding those fucking trucks. You know what I'm saying? They, those trucks didn't bother me, but I'm saying they knew better. And, you know, they're more seasoned even at that time. You know what I mean? They've already dealt with the East, the, the West Coast industry and, They've already been through a bunch of shit that they were just like, they were helping me out. Right. Yeah. So when I called, they were like, they were bummed. They weren't mad. They were bummed. They thought I was quitting. Right. I'm like, dude, dude, I, I just don't want to ride the trucks. Come on, man. Right. Oh, you know, and they, they were bummed because uh, that devastation, that video, that Z video. Yeah. That didn't come out yet, but I got sent a copy to premiere it at at uh at woodward, woodward you know what yeah. i'm saying so it was pretty pretty fucking sick so i still rode the trucks but when i got home right I, dude i said fuck this shit dude i've been riding <laughs> in these for a while i was supposed to go to japan right with z right you know z is pretty big over there right it's funny too before i get to that i remember talking to neil hendrix in the cafeteria at woodward and he was like rick what's up with z He's like, dude, it just seems like it's a drug front, dude. And I'm like, you know what? I, I was like, I never really fucking thought about it because I don't see Z anywhere. You know what I'm saying? And when I got home, like, you know, Eli Gezner, you know, he rode, Eli from Zoo, he rode for, um, uh, for Z. Oh, there's someone else too, right? But I mean, when I was skating for Z, I, I felt that I promoted Z better, more than anybody on the East, East Coast. I'm not talking about out there, but on the East Coast. I don't even know all the people that wrote for it, you know, I mean, I was, you know, I'm, I'm fucking loyal. It's loyal to a fault to what, yeah. but I put, 
I started I putting fucking it. started putting indies on, right? So and this is actually um right before I moved into my first apartment, which was was with Roger in July of ninety two. We sublet his girlfriend's apartment when she went away, right? We were supposed to be there for two months. We only lasted a month. We got kicked out the first month because I used to like literally two, three in the morning. I used to have the radio, my radio out the window and I'd be doing flat ground at like two in the morning. And dude, it just didn't go over well, right? <laughs> you think? Yeah. I, dude, I'm, dude, I'm, I'm, I did. I'm, I'm, I get I'm, it. That's that. We're, we like, and I didn't get into Matt and Serge yet and all stuff, dude, but that's, we're nothing. We're nothing but skaters. Like, like literally that, that is it. Dude, I can fucking play ball. I mean, I can throw a fucking ball. I, I can, I'm, I'm athletic because of where I grew up. Right. But I'm a, like, I'm a skate rat. That That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know the songs in the fucking videos, like Pat Steiner, Mike Sinclair, those motherfuckers, Jason Rothman, those motherfuckers can kill it. Like I'm playing skate trivia against those fucking dudes. Right. Okay. But the actual art of skateboarding and certain things, I, I, I really, I, 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 that's, I'm, I'm a skateboarder. That's it. Right. Yeah. Um, You've skated so, more than you have in your life. Like you're fucking, you're more skateboarder than you're not for sure. Oh, there's no, there's no doubt. Of, I honestly, I mean, I, I got more miles on my legs. I think than most people period actually, you know what I mean? But when I went to a contest at Bricktown, I, I was offered to ride for seven, 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 right. You know, Annie Stone, you know, Ben Liver's Edge, who's, who's an amazing skater, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, you know, Matt Reason. Uh, you know, these dudes rhyme for it, but I wrote for Z, right? But when they when they called me about the trip to Japan, I was like, dude, I've been riding indies, right? <laughs> so they called me the next day and kicked me off. Oh, right? man, you were I, loyal. <laughs> no, no, and, I, and, and in my mind, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? <laughs> like what else you got out here? Are you are you kidding me, dude? Really? Are you kidding me? I hung up the phone, picked it right up, and called Dave Andrack, and I was on seven 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 five minutes later. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and riding indies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, okay. But that you know, this is when we were in that apartment because we got it in July of '92 is when I moved into the city, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Might as well ask me another question because honestly, dude, I keep on going. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 totally. Um, all right, so um, just describe the city, like growing up skating around the city, and like, like. Uh, well, in, dude, in I, mean, I grew up. I did. I grew up in the woods, and no, honestly, but I mean, like after that, like I, I, once no, you started no, no, getting I, in there. When I first started going in, it, it was huge, right? Yeah. But it was just, you can get anywhere and everywhere, right? Like, I didn't, you know, I've been to New York, right? But I, I didn't go skating in New York, like, like more. If you're from North Jersey, Central Jersey, when you say the city, it's New York, right? Yeah. Where I live in South Jersey, right? It, the city to me is Philly. And I just got, to me, I say lucky because I, I really, there's, Philly's one of, the, one of the best fucking cities in the world for skateboarding. Like, I don't know about now. Everyone just skates municipal. I don't know. But when what we were doing, like, we, Philly is just, it was, in, it was incredible, right? And, you know, I, I mean, Roger is, is my man. That I mean, I used to drive my car, right? And park it. This dude used to work at the post office, the graveyard shift. So when I was done work or school, whatever, you know, the school and then, when I was done school, when I was working, I would drive my car, park it. This dude would just be getting up. So it worked out, right? And back then, he didn't burn. I'd burn, and we'd skate from 40th and Palatin, pretty much, right? He yeah. lived in Palatin and Preston, right? And we literally skated all the way to love every day. Every day, every, every day. We, like, well, Roger didn't drive, right? And yeah. Roger didn't take the fucking subway, right? But, you know, from there, you would zigzag, you know, you know, over market, cruise down. It, West Philly, you start off West Philly and then you go through the University of Penn, right? You dip out, get over there. You hit that Montague spot, right? And then yeah. you dip out and then you get on market and then you fucking shoot down market. Yeah. And then, you know, so you're like on 34, 32nd, whatever. And then you go past 30th Street Station, right? Which... Thursday Station, right across the street, was where Roger 
worked at the post office, right? Then from there, you, you go down a little bit hill and, you know, you got to get to 15th and JFK to get to, you know, and you have to go over a block too. But this is every day, like literally every day. And it just worked out. Um, obviously, Roger at that point was still all skate. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like all skate. And, you know, he knew that I was fucking some fucking wild motherfucker from, you know, Mefford. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said what I want. I wore crazy stupid fucking clothes i mean i you know what i mean like i just you know what i'm saying like if my shoe had a hole i don't give a fuck you know what i'm saying but he i i just adopted i adopted the way he skated and then realistically matt serge and i actually just well expanded on it and then honestly then you fucking you add fucking miracle man freddie who comes yeah. with us. like jesus christ freddie like first try but, but like he he he's he was he was like 15 and fucking gnarly really yeah. he was so good it was incredible what's funny though if you look before he started coming to philly like his shit he was so good like technically good right when he was on new school but it, he didn't skate nothing like the way that he did when he started skating with us yeah, like yeah. we we didn't say hey freddie do this I, it's funny how all these motherfuckers think that we have rules we have rules in our own mind for ourselves I don't give a fuck what you do, dude. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> yeah. if you want to push like a fucking shit, all right, you look like shit for a little bit. It's not my problem. Yeah. It, really. But people think they were so aggro about it. And I can't wait for the documentary that we get to giggle about it because, dude, it's, it's, it's a joke. But we still, like, I push switch. That's it. It looks better. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's, just, it's funny how people get upset when you have, like, a preference and you're outspoken about it. Like, people yeah, but they, always they, get did I hear? Did I hear these stupid shit? Like, did I, like, I made people... I understand that I've always been so outspoken is that, and I understand it comes with the territory. You're going to have people that fucking love it. You got people that hate it, but then you got fucking people who just fucking twist it for their own fucking gain. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? And then, then when it gets twisted, then that twisted bullshit gets into other people. Right. Yeah. It's and then they start fucking bigger. And then it's like, it goes down the lane and I'm like, are you fucking kidding it's me it's like dude. fucking telephone yeah yeah it's Bullshit. like dude you know what it, it, it's funny because people think that we were like you know because it's a shame dude like because honestly like when, when we get into the fucking clyde bullshit you know it affected some of my relationships and one of them is someone i've known for fucking years dude i've loved this dude for years and it just seems like he's a fraud now and you know and i film with him all the time um the fuck why did i fucking bring that up dude Cause I ain't fucking trying to just call him out. It's uh, oh, fuck. What did you just say? I apologize, man. No, oh, I, 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 no. I, what did you say before? And I, I fucking went off. I'm, I, I was just one. I was just wondering, like, I, I just I so actually, many thoughts in my head. You know what I mean? No, nah, I get it. I get it. I had a question actually. Uh, who is that? Who is who's outspoken in your family that you get that from? Or is that something? Was there a moment that like? No, you, no. My mom, no. my mom doesn't even know where I came from. Really? <laughs> my brothers could my brothers couldn't talk at the dinner table. Like huh. I'm not kidding. My brothers couldn't talk at the dinner table. I I I live like a fucking no. I could do whatever I want. I didn't even have to be home for dinner. You know what I mean? Like by the time I came around, dude, you know, and I was good at school, like like I like, you know, I mean I didn't master it because I didn't really try. I, school was easy, right? Yeah. Like I my school was good, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, but I just, I really just was fucking free. Honestly, there's, there's good. I, I love how I grew up. I ain't gonna fuck it. You know what I mean? But I have three kids and, and I love, I want them to have so much fun while they're kids. Right. And I, you know, and I, I'm very open with them about a lot, everything really. Um, but I've always like, dude, if you got a chance to go have fucking fun, I know eventually there's gonna be a time when you're not going to hang out with dad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, I the only thing is I try to curb just some of the stuff that I think would have been better if if I if it would have been curbed for me. Yeah. When I was younger. Because honestly, I got to do whatever the fuck I want. Like honestly, literally. But I loved it. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like I ain't gonna <laughs> lie to you. But I I was the first one to talk back to my dad. You know what I'm saying? I stuck up for my mom. My brothers not uh, yeah, my brothers are awesome, but they didn't have that ability to do so you know what i'm saying like growing up like like they grew up real more puerto rican than i did 
You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because they had to be Brooklyn. They had to be Hoboken. Then we're in Pemberton. And then when I got to Medford, I mean, shit, they all, like, had cars and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it was, you know what I'm saying? Like, my brother, well, they had, like, one or two years left at school. You know what I'm saying? But um, I, I just did, honestly, I took care of my business. My mom let me. And honestly, just down the road, I was always over Sean and Jason's house. Like, literally, that, that is where I grew up. And honestly, their dad, they, you know, like, man, when his dad and Sean and Jason's uh, and Tommy, right? When their parents got divorced, like that was me. Like it was my parents getting divorced. Yeah, that's it was rough. like I experienced a lot of stuff. And their dad is is crazy because he he got his hip blown off in the war, right? Whoa. Like he couldn't even go up the stairs for a good number of years, right? So we had all our fucking, you know, we had all bongs just up there. The motherfucker couldn't go upstairs. He got a surgery, <laughs> then he started going up there and started oh, stealing them. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, no, dude, it, it, dude. He, he, and he was a big dude. He was like, literally, he was a lefty. He was a baseball player. He was on the farm team of, of the Yankees what? before he went to the war. And then, dude, and like, he's, he's, he, he's crazy. And honestly, everyone in my high school partied at this house because we could, because that dude always went to the VFW every day. Yeah. Yeah. There's free. You know what I'm saying? It's, so it's, it, it's kind of, it's just crazy. But that, I mean, I, it's, it's just crazy. But that's, where I grew up, um, like no one really ever came to my house, yeah. right? Not because they couldn't. It, we were always over there. You know what I mean? I, matter of fact, I tried to have a party at my house one time with my parents away. My brother Louis, who's my, the, you know, he's the next one up for me. He fucking came in and kicked everyone out. Looked at me <laughs> as like, dude, get the fuck out of here, dude. I'm like, one and done. Like honestly, my house was this. It's my house is over there. You know what I mean? Um, but I grew up in Jason and Sean's house, which. It, it was pretty, pretty fucking awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Could have so, had some more boundaries though. You know what I mean? Yeah. My, my house was kind of like that growing up too. Like my mom was kind of lost on drugs and she was like the cool mom because she just let everything slide, which wasn't cool, you know, but like to all the kids, they take advantage of it. Did you try to it. party with your friends? Exactly. It's like that. Uh, yeah. Did, yeah. yeah. It, and, you know, and, and it's like, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? That's, that's tough. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's one of those situations, man. But, um, but whatever, survived. We're moving forward. Um, oh no, no, dude. I mean, I, I talked to you the other day. I mean, dude, you're beyond surviving. You you propelled forward, man. Hell yeah, absolutely. All right, mm -hmm. so I think I think maybe this is a good segue to just kind of get into the all the Clyde stuff. Maybe just tell me. Are you from, sure? Yeah, all right, I'm saying. All right, I think so. Um, maybe just tell me like how it came onto your radar and just take it from there because. It, this is my your platform right now to go ahead and explain the situation. Sure, but like I told you on the phone, you can I'll intervene and ask questions stuff like that. Because honestly, they're like, I, it just sucks that it's been swirling in my mind. Well, for that's why. A while. That's why I think this and is the that's time. what's fucking. No, well, look, if 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 my girl actually saw, I, I think her friend sent a link, or to her, right? Yeah. And I don't watch stuff like I just like I don't like I, I don't really you know i'll hit clips of whatever on instagram but i don't watch like these things you know what i'm saying I, I don't really watch podcast i don't really do all that stuff i mean shit i had my epic later it took me three years before i watched it and the only reason i watched it is because you shoved it in my face you yeah, know what i mean yeah. like yeah, i didn't yeah. need to see it so this right like after it's already been a little bit and then when oh. she showed me i'm glad she showed me so i can watch it because it was like holy shit dude it looks like you're doing like he's doing he was doing like a circuit like like all right you want to you got all pissy you got all pissy try to blow me up with the fucking dms all right you know what i'm saying like fucking michael rapaport did to dennis durant you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like yeah like he, he did a rapaport I, I don't even understand it but still i dm'd him because i've always loved but i love skateboarders i love skateboarding i don't like everyone don't be wrong but dude skateboarding and everything that I've been through with skateboarding, the, the community of it, the network, the traveling. I love fucking talking to my buddy Dave in fucking Australia, Andrew in Australia, Raul in fucking Amsterdam, even though he's in Caledonia or whatever the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is everybody all over the place, right? So when I saw that, I'm like, fuck. And when I watched it, um, because remember, I, I had to ask you, is, and my girl picked it up before I did, because I it sounded like you were just saying something on to what you were saying, but when you were like, you know, that's just some old shit or whatever, 
I thought you were saying something like to go with Clyde. And my girl was like, no, no, he, he said it like he didn't know this was coming up for one. And two, like even you don't want to hear some old. Do you know this is fucking 29 years ago? Like it's funny. It's fucking it's gnarly, dude. It's 29 years ago. And I've already dealt with it. But well, how do how, you how sorry to stop you? But how, how no, do no, you know? No, sorry, I do. How do you because I don't really know. Like I like you just said, when Clyde came on my podcast, and he brought it up. It was kind of out of left field, but no, had, you didn't even know. He didn't mind. set you up, right? But how he, how he, did you how do you know Clyde? Like, where did you guys meet? Like, how did it build to this? Like, well, he rode with Acme with Matt. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. I mean, dude, he was there that day, right? When I fucking you know when I fucked myself up, right? He was there that day. There was actually like fucking 50, 60 dudes there that day. There was so many people there that day, right? Take me um, through that day. Explain that day. No, I don't want, I don't really want to revisit that day. I've already okay. done this. That's what's yeah. fucking fucked. I've already wrote about this in great detail. I owned it. Oh, I got to eat right. a dick on it. I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I guarantee you, they all know that I used it as a curse word. Because if I fucking would have called some of that, you know, I would have would have really got my ass beat. Because now it's just rumor that I got my ass beat. It's, 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 it's so silly. You know what I'm saying? So, basi- fucking- so basically, oh. when, ba- basically, back in the day, you use the word that's inappropriate. No, no, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't. Look, it's, I've already done it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Really, right? Yeah. And so with, with Clyde, right? Yeah, there we go. When I, watched, when I watched him on your thing, right? And when I saw how your expression was, right? And him going on it. After he's already tried to blow it up, right? And then it's been a while. It, it made me feel like, what the? F- what are you doing, dude? Because clearly you didn't set it up. He did it. It was his own fucking agenda. For what reason, though? Right? I mean, honestly, the only thing I can, the only thing that I even came up about it is like, dude, you're only getting clicks off of my fucking name, dude. Like, that's it. Because you didn't. You're just no good that you're doing. All you're doing is fucking. You're actually facilitating fucking hate. You're getting from the people who don't know me to fucking hate on me. And you're not even fucking correct. Like, you're a fucking fraud, really. But the thing is, when I watched it, I'm like, it made me, it, you know, when like celebrities get like a, a new book's coming out or a new movie's coming out, right? Yeah. And they go on all the talk shows. Yeah. That's what it reminded me of. I was like, and the thing is, you didn't set it. If you would have asked him, that'd be a little bit different. But he didn't. So when I'm watching this, I'm like, I'm glad that I watched it because I'm like, dude, if I if if I didn't see it or he didn't go on there, I would have just continued just ignoring it and just let it fucking be, right? Yeah. But when I saw that, I was like, dude, why are you fucking continuing shit? Like, the, you're you're more than ne- mad now, bitch. You didn't do shit that day. You know what I'm saying? For one, but I own it. it I'm the one who fucked up. Don Cree was the first person to come up to you. He goes, yo, why'd you say that? I was like, don't fucking piss. Yeah, and yeah. I was pissed. And they know that I fucking did. What, they know. Trust me. L- listen. Well, be, like you said, it was 20, 20 some years ago. Scathe. The big, there was, dude, there was a big, there was a big burly dude, white dude with skinhead, walking a fucking dog with boots, walking next to fucking Javante. And I was on the three stair. He pushed me down the stairs with his boot. I'll tell you what. I want to thank that guy for not kicking me. Because if he would have kicked me, he would have broke my arm. He would have broke something. You know what I'm saying? I'm too fucking skinny like that. He was yeah. a big dude. But he put his foot on my shoulder and pushed me down. And then Javante was in my face, right? It's all good. Dude, honestly, at that time, yeah, I was fucking mad. You know what I'm saying? Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, because I know who I am. I know what it is. But I'm not from there. I understand how probably fucking came off. But I know who the fuck I am. I'm not, I don't need to fucking tell anybody that. Yeah. I owned it. It's fucked up. It's not wrong. But it stems from where I fucking grew up. But there's no fucking back people. No, but it, Dude, Medford's pretty fucking crazy. It's not justifying. I've already owned it, but I owned it fucking 29 years ago. So what the fuck are you keep on bringing it up for? That so I was just ignoring it. Like Pat wanted me just to just to because he, he was baiting me, this fucking dude, right? You know? And he wanted me to go on a show. And dude, I ain't gonna lie to you, dude. I wanted to go on a show and I was told not to. Wait, right? I, Clyde By asked most, you? Yeah. He wanted yeah, me to yeah. go on his show to discuss. What the fuck do you want to discuss, dude? Like, really? You know, so I don't want to go on your Black Panther radio, like what, WKRP in Cincinnati fucking show. But I wanted to because I know me and I know that I can ask him certain fucking questions. And I'm like, but I, Pat asked me to fucking just chill, not comment, not even on anything, just 
lay low. So I actually, dude, my phone, I just chucked it. And I really, I'm like, that fucking motherfucker. Because to me, right? I don't care what really what people say, dude. I've been so used to fucking bullshit from shows, dude. You know me. I'm not saying you, you, right? But but you yourself too. You know that I'm very consistent. I'm I am the way that I am, and I yeah. have, dude. I love all these people. Dude, I have. There's not too many people I really don't like in skateboarding, you know. But I do not like frauds, and I fucking hate liars for their own gain. Yeah. Really, I, I cannot stand it. So when I saw it. I was like, dude, what the fuck's your agenda, dude? All right? You know what I'm saying? Really, like, really. And he had, he, I'm sure he had a couple of guests. He had a fucking, I know KT was just on there on Saturday. And honestly, I don't know if he asked him, but I mean, when this shit first happened, I felt like I couldn't say anything. I felt I was in a box. I felt betrayed. I really yeah. did. And not betrayed by fucking Clyde. Dude, Clyde, you want to make it that we're not cool? Fuck you, dude. I don't give a fuck. Seriously. When we see each other, do something. I don't give a really, Just set up a boxing match, I don't bro. really care. But, dude, <laughs> after that day, right, just like, because one his fucking thing, I was like, dude, you fucking stayed at my house. It's funny. People clown on that. But, dude, when I wrote that, I was like, I wrote it, and I was like, what the fuck am I doing talking to social justice motherfuckers? Like, fuck you people. Really, truly, fuck you people. So I wrote, you know, I'm like, you stayed at my house. His fucking reply was, that was before blah, blah, blah. I said, it, it <sighs> And he loves, I don't know why he does this too, but I don't know if he does it with other things, but in some of the things that he wrote about me, he likes to capitalize the word fact, right? Yeah. And dude, you're not, you're, you're, you're wrong. I mean, you're, you don't have all the fucking facts. You know what I'm saying? Why didn't you write about the fucking big fat white dude? Did you happen to miss it? But again, I don't care. I fucked up that day. I fucked dude, Javante. I was mad at that time, but realistically, dude, good on him. I respect him for actually fucking doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why wouldn't he? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Clyde also didn't really mention, right, that that was kid shit, right? But Javante and I fucking manned up. I saw him at Tampa fucking pro. And he said, yo, let's squash this show. And we shook hands. Hell yeah. So why isn't, why isn't that shit in there? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you just want to fucking go with the fucking negative. It, it, it's crazy. It, it was fucking crazy, too, for real, though. I feel like I, I actually can't be Puerto Rican. It literally is black and white now. Like, no, I'm not Puerto Rican. Fuck it. And honestly, dude, it's crazy. Like, I, I don't know. You know. When I watched your shit, and I was going to watch it again, and then I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't need to, right? But I, some of the things that I remember, there's a couple of things that are, are the worst for me, and I'm going to get to that shit, right? Yeah. But I think he said something like, I guess he just doesn't like black people. Like, I think he said something like that. You know how preposterous that is? That is insane. I invited the world the world to come skate with us in Philly. You stay at my house, you stay at Matt's. The fucking world. And this is all through the 90s. Even like Steven all those motherfuckers, dude. I have photos. They're all at my house. You well years after some bullshit. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And honestly, I've eaten it for a while. Literally, you know, I'm like, all right. Because, you know, the, all the Love Park and all the Philly shit, I can tend to when we do the documentary. Because honestly, none of those motherfuckers, none of them, literally, me, Matt, Serge, and Skip, maybe Shane, we know more than everybody. Like, flat out. Add Puka, too. Puka, you know, Roger knows when he was there, but Roger left early, right? Um, but it will all come out in the wash as far as that shit goes. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's, the know, like, what's the documentary? Who's making this? Uh, Chris Mulhern is doing 15th and JFK. Oh, sick, And he's got sick. some series. But you know, like the on video and shit like that? Yeah, yeah, All yeah. those fucking things? Yes. I mean, they're okay. But they only focus on certain years. Like, do you have no idea how Philly ever fucking started? Yeah. Like, yeah. really? That's the fucking good shit. And that's our shit. I, dude, there's a lot of shit. I ain't gonna say. I ain't gonna fucking try. Let to... me say this too, Ricky. I'll I wait think... to the documentary to for people. Because honestly, people are... This is gonna be... What we know is actual fact and truthful. And we're gonna blow up... We're gonna blow up a few people. To tell you the truth. You know what I mean? But I'll wait for that time. Because, you know what I'm saying? The, the documentary is going to be fucking, it's going to be awesome because it really is. This is the shit you don't know about Philly. Like the earliest footage of Philly we have. And yeah. it has nothing to do with me. Really, Roger's buddy. We went to go visit him, took him out to have drinks, and he gave us all these fucking tapes. It's just, it's crazy, right? I don't want to get off the thing. So going back, so when I saw this shit, right, I was like, man, dude, 
if I, like I said, dude, if he wasn't on your shit and he wasn't doing, because honestly, I didn't even know this, but I was told that uh, he posted all those fucking DMs on, on like slap and all that shit. And like, there's like KKK. It is so, it's, it's so ridiculous, dude. Like I, it, it's unbelievable that it's just unbelievable. I, honestly, dude, honestly, it, the word is the word and I fucked up, but I didn't call anybody. I used the curse word because I'm a fucking idiot. All right. Gotcha. But actions is, is what makes someone. Yeah. A, a fucking I don't I didn't like the word, and I I don't like the fucking the n word even though I hear it on fucking TV every day. Do you know that fucking words in Forrest Gump? I watched it yesterday. I'm like fuck, you can't you can't escape that goddamn word. Yeah. And watch you watch any Will Smith movie, any fucking any of those motherfucking movies. It's like da, 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 da. dude, you know what? More power. I guess you have all the leeway. Actually, I don't care if you say it or not. But it because I put myself in that position, right? This is another thing, too. All those people that were there that day, I guarantee you that it bothers me more than any one of those people there that day for the length of time that it has. Because I, I'm reminded of it. And I'm reminded of how much of a fucking fuck. Like, I put myself in that position. Now, damn well, they all know. I, I'm not even worried... I'm not even worried about that because I trust me, dude. If, if they really thought I fucking called somebody, I I would have been, I would have had fucking ten dudes on my fucking case, guaranteed. I'm not, even, I'm not even worried about that. That's so old shit. And like I said I've already talked about it, right? Yeah. Um, it's fucked up that someone would try to try to like bring it up now because the temperature and the culture is like the temperature and the culture to try to bring it up now. I love, I love the worst time, dude. I, dude, I love when you said the word temperature. I, I say climate, but when you said temperature, I was like, dude, that's a better word. And I wanted to say it, but I wasn't gonna bite. I wasn't gonna bite your word, dude. You know what, no, I mean? but you know what I mean? You were gonna say it anyways. You There's know a mean? lot but, of that shit going on right now where everyone's attacking each other, calling each other racist for no nah, reason. It's just a waste of time. And it's like you, nah, it, everyone it, who knows the, you, everyone who knows you knows you're not. And like, yeah, twenty well, something well, years ago, you've made me, a mistake. Yeah. Like that's Dude. human. You don't bring, you don't try to paint someone for who they were. We change every seven years. All of us, like there's growth for a reason. I, dude, I was, yeah, it's kind look, of a I fucked was, up thing to do. I was 21. So let's get to how it really started. Right. Cause okay. this is, cause I want to go back to when he was on your show, there's a couple of things that honestly, that it is the worst for me. Right. Like him saying, whatever, I'm going to fuck. If he wants to have his version, really, I don't give a fuck. If he He's wants to fucking show. get, if he wants to get people who don't know me to fuck with me, it, those people don't, I don't give a fuck about that. You know what bothers me? It bothers me about all the people that I do know and yeah. that I'm friends with, right? So, you know, I bought this fucking stereo shirt. You know, the pandemic happened, right? Yep. You know what I mean? You know, I have a small brand. As a matter of fact, I don't even have a small brand because that's another fucking dick fucking move that he did, but I'll get to that one too. But I fucking bought a stereo shirt to support stereo. I do. Like, I'm genuine who I like and who I don't like. I'm not a fraud. And that's what bothers me, right? So there's a, you know, dude sent me, I got this Jason Lee picture and a shirt. The shirt was not the right one, but I got this fucking thing, dude. Not, seriously, right? And I said, my girl told me not to fucking show this stuff because it looks like I'm trying too hard. And honestly, bitch, I'm not trying hard at all. This fucking thing that Dune sent me the package and drew that, that's a fucking memento for me now. Like, literally. Like, I mean, it ain't the fucking best thing that fucking Dune's done. But he wrote, it's mine. Like, it's mine. You, like, and, and I don't like black people. I, I got to stop saying it. Because it, it is so preposterous. It's, it's fucking ridiculous, dude. My first fucking roommate. I had another roommate. And I took care of a Roger. I took fucking care of KT. As a matter of fact, I wore KT shirt on purpose today. Because I'm sure fucking Clyde didn't fucking attack uh, KT. Because KT, if he, you know, if he's got to come correct, I took care of that too. Like he lived with me. When I was getting paid from fucking New Deal, I fucking bought him food. I took him out every fucking night. But I love KT, right? And I know they're fucking friends. When this first shit, when I said I, I felt betrayed, KT would have been a perfect motherfucker to fucking say, yo, Clyde, you're a dick. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I love that man. You don't know the shit that KT has said to me, right? Now, I don't need this shit. Like, it's, it's me and him. It's, but I'm, dude, I love fucking Dune. Look, I bought a fucking shirt from fucking Alf. I got another picture from fucking Alf. He's like, yo, I appreciate you. Thanks for the love. 
that's another memento that I fucking got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what bothers me. Like all these relationships with these dude, Kenny Hughes is one of my fucking favorite skaters. So fucking good. So big, for powerful. A big like, man, dude. He, he's got the feathery <laughs> feet for a big I, and he knows so this. I, I've talked to him so many times. I've been on these trips with him. I party with him, dude. I it I I wish I got to hang people. out with him. Fuck these people, dude. I love skateboarding and I love most people. Like I'm very that way. I don't care what people fucking say. When, dude, so many times when people meet me, like, dude, you're nothing like what I've heard. I'm like, yeah, no shit. But I understand that I put myself in that position because I really just fucking spewed out. I really don't give a fuck. Like, I don't just say shit just to say it. I'm not that dude. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? So this is how it started is he wrote a post. Like it might've been in February, like fucking black history, Month, right? And he wrote about that fucking day. Now he didn't put my name in it, but I wasn't fucking on board with the fucking how he wrote it. But he, you know what I'm saying? He, but he, again, he didn't, like we, we were always, fu- I did. I thought we were fucking like, I remember him when he visited us and stayed with us with Matt. You know what I'm saying? He was, he, dude, he was, he's an awesome dude, honestly. Right. So, when I saw what he wrote, I don't agree the fucking the way he was like, I'm there. I was there. Right. But, but there's some things you're fucking not there, dude. Right. But in the end, it makes a fucking difference. This and that. I walked away unscathed. You know what I'm saying? And I've had to pay for it because I was the ignorant one. You know what I'm saying? So. That's that. So he wrote it, but I DM him. I didn't do it on his fucking thing. This is like fucking girl shit, dude. This fucking kills me, dude. <laughs> Again, if he wasn't on your show, I would have just let it let it go. But when I saw him on your show, it seemed like what the fuck are you doing the rounds? Well, you're going to tonight show fucking next. Yeah, you I, got felt, no juice. I felt you're never going to fucking the show. You I got, felt you're, kind of you're a bad. fucking nobody. Ricky, I felt kind of bad because like uh, I had no yeah, idea and it anything, came but... up. And then now it's like it's just like, well, I, now I, you realize that there's more to it. Yeah, right? exactly. Honestly, exactly. I called you because I, you know. When I saw it, I called Donnie to get your number, right? And Donnie is, again, I, like, dude, you're a skateboarder. Even if I've ever skated with you once, didn't skate with you and party with you once or whatever, dude, you're like, I'm, I love skateboarding. I love everything about skateboarding, dude, like just that way. So I called Donnie. I'm like, yo, dude, I need, uh, dude, I need Shetler's number, man, right? And, and I talked to Donnie, right? And, and, and Donnie's my man. Like, honestly, I, par- I partied with him. He stayed at my house. Uh, you know, he, all my teams. Like, he wrote for First Division. But, I mean, I traveled with him. When he was on Element, I was new to it. Dude, he's, dude, he's one of the most epic human beings, right? So oh, yeah. when I talked to him, right, you know, he, he, he heard my voice, right? But I wanted your number. And, you know, he called you. But he made sure that it was cool. It, I know he, doesn't, he didn't think that I was going to, like, blast you, right? I know he didn't think that. But he's respectful. He called you first. To get your number, then he gave it to me, right? Um, and you know, you remember when I fucking called you? For one, we want to know, like, did you set any of that up? Because it definitely didn't look like it. we were right, right? My girl was really on it, right? Yeah. And and then I felt bad. I felt bad that like you were, like, like a part of it. And then remember, I called you again and said I'd come on, like just doing this right now. Like, I care. I feel bad if someone thinks that you're on my side and not his side. And I know that you're not, right? You, like, you're still just like, this is just stupid. I know I, I, I know you, and I know what we've already spoke about before, right? But it is kind of fucked up, and it seems like there's an agenda to it because there's no good to it. There's actually nothing that is gained from it. It's hate. You're actually fucking trying to get people to fucking hate on me about something 29 years ago that you were just there. It was me and Javante type shit, but me and me and Javante. You know what? You know what sucks? I blew a chance of being friends with Javante. That's on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's on me. That sucks, dude. You know, and no one wants to fucking think about it. I don't talk about it. It's not a good day. I can't justify it. You know what I'm saying? They know that I fucking didn't call anybody that name, that word. You know what I'm saying? It was a curse word. Again, can't justify it. That's why I never really fucking talk about it. So when I saw it, I DM this fucking dude. And, you know, he, he, when he wrote back, he's like, yo, who are you coming at? Like, he thought I was coming at him. Right. And, I, you know, I apologize if, 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 if what, but it was all good. Right. Yeah. Yo, we were like, yeah, he's like, yo, I, I've never had a problem with you, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and, you know, take care. We both take care. 
So now, I don't know, a couple weeks, whatever goes by, he wrote a he wrote a fucking post about freedom or something like that, right? So I wrote a comment on it, and maybe I didn't word it right, or he didn't like it. Either way, there was no ill ill intent. That that's a guarantee. I DM the dude first, right? Like that's respect, right? But yeah, maybe he doesn't think the way that I do, and. It is what it is. Fuck you, dude. I, I don't at this point, you've already made it known what you where you stand. So you can eat a dick. I don't give a shit. But when I fucking put that that comment, the next day, right? He got all like like this is like jilted girlfriend shit. He posted all the DMs. And that's what reminded me of the fucking um uh, Michael Rappaport blowing up fucking Dennis Durant saying cunt. I think he I think he'd use home, some homo shit. Like, yeah. I think he was just being a real fucking dude telling this dude to fuck off. But that bitch put it on blast. And that's what he did. And, and but he, I think he wrote that I white privilege, uh, talked about my upbringing, uh, that I, I'm, a, um, I'm arrogant and all stuff. And the one, the only fucking thing that's true is I am arrogant. Really. You know what's funny? I try to, he, he's a fucking, he, he's a fraud. I, I don't really give a fuck, right? Like when the time comes, we gotta see each other. Go for it, man. You know what I'm so saying? You, you think you... Don't think I'm not gonna say something to you. But my girl, I tried to explain to my girl who doesn't know Clyde, and I literally, I'm not kidding you. I'm like, Clyde and I are very similar. We say whatever the fuck we want. We're very, you know, like I'm now calling him a fraud because it, he is a fucking fraud because he's doing it for an agenda, right? But prior to this shit. I know that Clyde is good friends with KT and all. Dude, KT goes into, uh, Clyde goes into the whole category of like, dude, I know he's good friends with fucking Gorecki and dude, I'm all good. But when he did that, that was some, that was just fucking ridiculous, right? Yeah. And he, but then he went on, but it was crazy. Like, you didn't like what I wrote a comment on your fucking thing. And then you fucking did that. Like, honestly, like, see, he has a fucking vagina, dude. Like, that's fucking girl shit. I couldn't, I was like, holy shit. And dude, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was bummed. I was sad. And like I told you, I felt like I was like in a box. I felt like I couldn't say anything because what am I going to do? Say and defend myself? And I got to deal with fucking like couch potato heroes just saying fucking shit. Fuck you people. I don't even know you. Dude, Pat from Traffic wanted me to write like some fucking kind of thing. And dude, I told him I would do it for the dude. Cause this is another thing, Clyde, you fucking prick. It's not fair to all those young dudes. I don't even do traffic. Traffic has been in their hands for a decade. Really? So just because my name's attached to it, you fucking, you're going to tell people like, don't represent dude. Fuck you, dude. Like you're affecting all those dudes and they're all good fucking kids but they had to deal with thinking like people think that they're racist dude i'm not fucking and these dudes it was just it's sad right so he wrote all this shit i'm like dude i i did i i dude i called roger like i need you know i need roger i need roger i need roger his vice like dude like and he he you know, he broke it down you know he was like dude i told you back in the day blah blah blah. i apologize that my other friends didn't fucking Square me away, but he's referring to the time period way back then, not now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and you know, he he would have called um, if I would have went on Clyde's show. Roger would have called, right? And I'm like, I don't need you to do it, right? But he was like, but Rick, you gotta understand, it's hard for a black man, like, right? Like, it's hard for a black man. I guess to defend my action, but fucking 29 years ago, fuck off, dude. I'm not saying fuck off Roger. Roger to me is, there's not too many people that I look, that I admire more than Roger. To be very honest with you. That's, and I'm going to get to that because that, I'm going to fucking slay this fucking dude because of what he said. But, um, he does know nothing about how fucking I grew up, where I grew up. You know, my dad was fucking dark, dude. Like my dad had to do with all that. Now I didn't. All right. Now, I don't really give a fuck if I didn't do what you do. Like, really, my school's probably better than yours, fucking Clyde. All right. But anyway, it, do, I, do you want me to write you a fucking check or something like that? I don't, what, what do you want, dude? I don't yeah. give a fuck. It's not my fault. What the fuck? 
I actually like that I fucking went to school where I went to. You can fuck off if you hate your fucking life. That's not my problem. You know what I'm saying? So you can eat a fucking dick. You know what I'm saying? But if you read all, look, dude, I, I, if you read all his interviews and stuff like that, we're similar, right? We're arrogant, right? It's just that his arrogant got fucking Jacksonville, Gainesville, wherever the fuck he's from, nowhere. My arrogance put Philly on the fucking map. You know what I'm saying? So there's a fucking difference. But that arrogance was needed, right? But there's a lot of help. Matt, Serge, Freddie, you know what I'm saying? Well, Stevie, you know, when Stevie started coming up, you know, Jimmy Chung was already there well before I was ever there. Puka, it was, and then when Roger moved away, was, there's a lot of things, but I was, I'm the one that called the magazine and said, yo, you need to come here. That's not where skateboarding is at. Yeah. Look at it. Philly became one of the fucking premier top fucking destinations, dude. Really. But it is what it is, right? This fucking dude, so he gets all pissy, right? And Pat told me to just not to get baited by the fucking dude, right? Um, and like I said, Roger would, would have called, you know what I'm saying? And I already said before, KT yeah. is the man that should have fucking shut his friend up, to tell you the truth, you know what I'm saying? He, he, in my personal opinion, you know what I'm saying? But I, KT is very reserved. So I know KT, right? Um, but it's a hard position to be in if you're KT. Well, I think it's easier for KT than Roger because KT is really good friends with fucking Clyde. And when you're really good friends, you can say whatever the fuck you want. It's like, dude, that's not right, dude. Like, yeah. my man has, my man has taken care. My man is my man. That's it. But I felt betrayed. It was. So I let it go. And like I said, I listened to the dudes. I listened to my girl. I, I stayed off of it and I just let it fucking go. It was nice to see fucking positive shit. You know who the first motherfucker who reached out to me? This is crazy, dude. This is great. The first dude, really the first and only dude, because I reached out to Roger and I reached out to Pooka and stuff like that, right? Is this fucking BMXer dude that grew up with Bobby Pulio and um, Andy Batista. His name is fucking Bob Serbo. And he lives in Austin, Texas. But he fucking called me up. He was like, dude, you all right? You need to talk? Look, man, blah, blah, blah. Dude, I, that was so amazing. You know what I mean? I was still like, man, and, and I was, and I've been letting it go. All right, dude, you want to think what the fuck you want to think? Fuck you. I don't know these people anyways. But like I said, when I saw him on your shit, right, my girl put it in my face. And then I saw how, how corny it was and how fucking, how fucking fraudulent it was. And then what really, dude, him fucking talking about how I grew up, dude. Like, if you want to come over to my fucking, so one of my barbecues, my family, you're going to see a lot of fucking darkness, you fucking cunt. Really, you, just because I don't look that way, dude, you're a fucking cunt. I don't give a fuck who you are. It's, you're just really just fucking doing uh, a, a, a character uh, assassination, right? For what fucking gain, you fucking fool? Like, what are you gaining? You, there's nothing to be gained from it, you know what I'm saying? So there's more people that hate me that I don't know. All right, oh well, you know what I'm saying? I've fucking dealt with that for years. But I know what the fuck I am and I know what I'm not. And I can't fucking have fucking fraudulent motherfuckers trying to fucking try to boost their fucking new little show. Right. Fuck you, dude. So I told Roger, I don't need it. Right. Did you just see that? Is no. it come on your screen? No, oh, no, I got I got a, I got a notification. I was like, damn, can you see that? Oh, OK. No. You can, all right. So, you know, I was like, dude, you know, I'm like, Raj, thank you, man. But no, no, I, I did. I like. When I saw him on your fucking show, remember when I called you, right? Yeah. Remember I, what I told you? I felt good that day. You know what I mean? I felt like, and, and I even joked with you, what was the only thing that would be better? If I'm doing this with you, what would be the only thing that would be better? That you were black. Oh, yeah, yeah, you were saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Then you told me that you were like number six black <laughs> Dude, on the fucking, internet, I got dude, put is, on a list. <laughs> that is fucking fantastic. Honestly, that's that's fucking fantastic. Really, it is right. Someone was but, being racist on the internet, and they put me on a, on a fucking list of black people, not knowing, not looking at me, but hearing my story, which is fucked up, which is racist. Which dude, is honestly, ridiculous. Dude, it's you know, so ridiculous dude, I, that I, we're you know rehashing. What? Look, 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 I, you know what? Clyde probably has fucking tons of friends, and you know what? Between me and him, dude. All right, we're not cool then. You're, all right, fuck off, dude. All right. Don't bother me, man. You want me to fucking take you off? Like, I don't need to follow your shit, right? I don't give a fuck what you cook. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really, I don't really fucking give a shit, right? 
But I'm not trying to get other people to fucking hate them. What I am fucking trying to do is I want fucking people to realize it's fucking, it's sad and it's so easy for anyone just to say fucking bullshit and fucking people get on it and believe it like it's fucking fact. That's fucked to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I care about fucking Dune or Alf. You know what I'm saying? I care about Vern, even though Vern's a fucking turncoat, you fucking cunt. You know what I'm saying? But I care about not just black people. I don't, it's crazy. I don't, I don't really look at it that way. You know what I'm saying? But nowadays, dude, if I know an Asian joke, I'm racist. If I know a black joke, I'm racist. I'm just faking racist. Might as well, everyone's racist. Let's just do it that way. You know what I mean? So when Clyde, when you call your fucking best friend's dad fucking redneck kick, that's okay. Thing is, you can call that dude whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to come at you. Like, I, really, you say what the fuck you want, dude. But it's just, just kind of fucking, you know, silly. If you read all his interviews, dude, that's what I'm saying. We're similar. Like, we're, we're, we're arrogant. He says whatever the fuck he wants. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's the best way that I could describe it. Now, he can say whatever he fucking wants. Because now, I guess he's fucking on his 12 steps, right? Like, he doesn't drink anymore. Dude, that dude has been blackout drink. Dude, I fucking party all the time. I know that dude's some fucking whack shit. All through the years, dude. That's what we do. We're skateboarders. We're fucking just, you know, we're derelicts at times. It's totally fucking fine. But don't come off like you're, you went from 12 steps and you used that fucking ladder to get on some fucking high horse. Like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? My buddy sent me a, like, he, he showed me a photo of one of the last times that Clyde was fucking drunk, right? And dude, it's, it's not a good photo, right? Like, he showed it to me because I guess he wanted, like, he, he thought that I might want it. You know what I mean? Like, no, I don't give a fuck what he does. Like, I'm not that way. I, I'm not a fucking bitch, right? Like, I, I don't need to do that, right? Like, I, I don't even fucking think about you, dude. Say it you. I love you. I did because that's how I am with my skateboard family, which is only second to my blood related family. You know what I'm saying? I'm a skateboarder for my whole goddamn life. That is, I, if you ask me, I'm a skateboarder. Like, again, I don't care if I skate or not. I am a skateboarder all the way through the way I look at things. You're never going to take it away. So if you, whatever, because you, you know, listen to his shit, he just focuses on a certain way, right? You remember his minority reports, right? He always wanted to have that one token white guy. Is that okay? Is that acceptable to say? I mean, dude, it is, he's a fucking fraud I, I, and that's it. And we'll deal with it when we deal with it. I don't care. But I, I hope fucking Clyde, you just fucking, let it fucking wither. Why don't you just fucking forget my name? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you used it enough to get some clicks, dude. You know what I'm saying? But let it go. Like, like just, just fucking let it go. Now, I understand that by me coming on, right, it, it, it might, you know, like, say, Pat Steiner, he, like, he'd be like, dude, because he, he really didn't want me to go on the show. Not this one. He, no one knows that I'm on this, right? Yeah. Because this is, this is me. When that motherfucker was on your show, that, that was it. Like, I can't just let someone keep on fucking doing it so he can do whatever he wants from now just everyone needs to know anything that that fucking dude writes fucking more from now it is it is a fucking lie because he had nothing beforehand what did he use he used a 29 year old fucking thing that really he had nothing to do again like you're so pissed uh, you didn't do shit that day <laughs> and you came to stay at my house you fucking fraud so it's just People need to understand. It's just not fucking okay just to fucking say what you want. You know what I mean? Like, it's just that's too easy to fucking say that shit. You know what I mean? It affected. It has affected a couple relationships that I I think that I, it, it definitely affected Burn. Burn could go eat a dick, right? But there's other people like you know what I mean? Like you know, I love fucking Frankie. I shot for him all the time, dude. I was fucking just dude. I was out of my mind. I fucking sent him a nasty email, or a text. You know what I'm saying? He wrote me in the morning like. Yo, Rip, what the fuck? And, dude, I read it. I'm like, what, what the fuck? I did, you know what I mean? Like, he spun me for a couple days, dude. And then, remember when I told you when I talked to you, dude? And I, and I thanked you because you're giving me the platform. I mean, dude, that's just, I can go to other ones. It's not like I didn't have a platform. You know what I mean? But I like you. I trust you. And he was just on your shit. And the fact that I saw that you fucking got bamboozled you had no idea this mother. This it just proves it to the fucking agenda. You know what I'm saying? That it's it's just dude, it's not okay. 
and, to, and really, to be honest, and this, I I'm gonna, even... I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this with this one because honestly, dude, yeah. then I'm just gonna keep on getting more fucking heights. You know what I'm saying? Just, dude, Clyde, just fuck off, dude. Do your fucking fucking thing. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Actually, I ain't gonna lie, dude, man. You know what I mean? If you had a problem, I'm proud of you that you don't drink anymore. If it was a problem for you, you know what I'm saying? But get the fuck off some fucking high horse, dude. You fuck off, dude. What killed me the most when he fucking was on your fucking show, dude? He fucking just totally dismissed my relationship with Roger. Like it was nothing. Oh, he just said Roger. Like, what? Like I use Roger's name or I hide behind it. That is so fucking classless. It's, it's, just, it's so fucking ignorant. I, I can't even believe it, dude. Like, I can't believe it. Roger is not just a fucking awesome friend. He was like a mentor. He's a fucking pioneer. And he's like one of my fucking heroes, dude. That is insane. The fact that every time I got an interview or whatever, it's because, fuck it, I know that I did mo- I did a lot of work, right? Me, Matt, sir, we're fucking a trio. And I mean, dude, Stevie, Freddie, I, Jerry Fisher. I, I, I mean, go on and on and on. I mean, Andrew Craig, Sean, I mean, dude, come on. I can go on and on, right? seriously just just flippantly could just fucking say that like are you fucking kidding me you know it was interesting he didn't mention anything about like he didn't say like anything about kt because he knows more about my relationship with kt you know what i'm saying true right but he he fucking just poo poo fucking my i was at the fucking dude's wedding like i you know what i'm saying like i i you know that doesn't make everything i understand it right but every time I got an interview, every time when I fucking was going from fucking brick to brick to brick to brick to make fucking Philly viable, make sure no motherfucking pro ever went from D.C. to New York again. And actually, we did, we killed it. We made it where everyone came to Philly first. Philly was fucking on fire, right? Every time. I've always given props to Roger because I knew no one really fucking knows him. I don't know how many people saw Troops of Tomorrow. That dude needs fucking he needs his fucking shine and i i took it upon myself to fucking give it to him literally and that's that's fucked you know what i'm saying like roger did so much it's fucking unbelievable and he had to go his time was up he needed to go to sf you know what i mean he remembers that conversation i said dude it sucks you gotta leave dude because dude we're blowing fucking philly up and he knew it and he helped when he worked at thrasher he helped and the dude, we we killed it, dude. Like I, I don't give a fuck with it. And they'll come on the documentary, dude. Philly is fucking amazing. And Philly style is actually within that. And that really is is you know, when I say mentor, I mean the motherfucker wasn't going down the street and telling me, yo, Ricky, do that, do that. You know what I'm saying? It's like monkey see, monkey do. I mean, I've already skated down the goddamn road and stuff like that. He skated it in a different way. I we adapted, incorporated, and like I said, Matt Surge, right? Fuck, we 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 branched out, made it better, and then you got like fucking dudes like Freddie who are like fucking, I don't know, maybe the first East Coast prodigy, dude. He was so incredible, right? Just yeah. did everything down the street, right? Um, but that's the illest fucking thing, like that is the illest thing. And KT, you better fucking tell fucking Clyde to fucking eat a dick, dude, because that's fucked. To fucking diminish my relationship with fucking Roger is absolutely insane. Cause you've never, no one ever heard fucking Roger. Stevie doesn't fucking talk. As a matter of fact, Stevie fucking dissed him in the fucking interview, calling him a token black dude. That is insane. Black, Philly is one of the blackest fucking cities, dude. There ain't no token black skater in fucking Philadelphia. It ain't no one's fault that in the early, late 80s, early 90s, that there was just way more fucking non black skaters. If you look at all, you go to Plastic, go to Boston, go anywhere you want. Look at those big, you know, group photos, right? 70% fucking white. Everywhere and anywhere. It's just the way it was. It's just the way it was. There's no fault of anyone else. It's just skateboarding just didn't progress through the cities yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just it. But to fucking just to clown Roger like that, that's fucked. That, that, that. Honestly, that that hurt me because honestly, I've always loved fucking Steve. I, I was always proud of him. Hey, and then I started reading fucking all his bullshit lies, and he can go eat a dick too. But we'll deal with that in the fuck other thing. At, I've always I've eaten it though. Like I've eaten it. 
But when he wrote about Roger, dude, I was fucking pissed. Roger wrote a letter to, to Thrasher. They didn't post it because it was too long. Dude, it's a fucking masterpiece. Roger loved everyone too, right? And Roger was fucking hurt. Like, he was hurt. And he, he you know, Stevie obviously didn't read it. I got a copy of it. You know what I mean? Maybe it might come out one day. I don't know. But Roger, he wrote it pretty fucking, he wrote it. It's very well written. And there's a lot of fucking, a lot of care. Like, he was, he was hurt too. And he was pissed. And he reminded fucking Stevie, yo, dude, you don't remember that we all used to fucking hang out all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't remember that. Dude, you know the photos I sent to you? Yeah. Dude, I got all these photos of all those dudes in my house. KT, Roger, Stevie, Larry Brown, all those dudes. And I wanted to post it and joke like, hey, man, look, they all came for the clan meeting. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that ain't going to fucking do anyone good. You know what I'm saying? No, but just, just, just too many fucking frauds out there. And that's the only thing that bothers me. Dude, if you don't like me, good. All right, fuck it. I got plenty of friends. But I ain't trying to fucking do Like, I ain't trying to do it. I'm me. I like me. I'm okay. And I know I've already dealt with lies and fraud people, but this one, this was a little bit, this is a little bit more. And like I said, if he wasn't on your show, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be doing this. Right. But what the fuck? Am I just going to keep on letting this motherfucker just going around and just fucking keep on fucking bash my name? Look, dude, I'm making my case. I'm telling all you people straight the fuck up. That's it. So for here, if he wants to do and keep on going, I'm just, I'm out. Like, I'm not going to, I've already, I made it. Like I did, I made my fucking case and I know what I made is fucking fine. You know what I mean? He counts, keep on. It'd just be better if he just go about his merry business. I'll go about my own fucking merry business. I just feel that he's on a high horse and he's not going to, but I'm not, I'm not going to get baited. That, that's it. He can go eat a dick. If we ever cross paths, dude, do what you need to do. That's it. Right. That's it. But you know what I'm saying? You did no good. You hurt relationships for me. And you're fucking basically just telling fucking people that don't me, don't know me to fucking hate on me. What good is that? All your, you, what good is you're doing nothing? Are you trying to bridge the gap between the, between, you know, the divide? Cause it doesn't seem like it. Not at all, actually. And I'm sure everyone's going to fucking agree with that. And I understand not everyone's going to want to fucking say it, but not everyone's being fucking attacked fraudulent. And that's, that's fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, I don't, dude, I don't, I have fucking friends all over the fucking place. I know everyone, you know what I'm saying? And I was fucking truly sincere. I blew the chance. I'm not saying that Javante or I would have ever been friends. I, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, maybe we were never. But I blew that fucking possibility. You know what I'm saying? But we both manned up and shook hands. Like, that's fucking men's shit. You know what I'm saying? We don't blow up fucking people's DMs like fucking bitches and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So go have a fucking nice day. You know what I'm saying? And Anthony, thank you very much. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that you were fair. You know what I mean? You really, you didn't goad me. You weren't trying to, you know, get me to, you know, like salacious shit to make your shit fucking rise. You know what I'm saying? This is a real genuine shit and it's just not right and it's not okay. But anybody who fucking thinks it's okay, all right, cool. Wait till it happens to you. You know what I'm saying? And Clyde, dude, if you really are, man, dude, you're on your 12 steps, man, I'm proud of you. That's for real though. Because this is before this shit but dude just 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 fucking just forget about me dude we don't need to be cool just please you already made just you made your case that's it let it fucking be and if you got a problem if you we run into each other then do whatever you gotta fucking do that's it other than that because honestly if people are gonna see more and more shit i think i just kind of spelled it out pretty fucking good that it's pretty obvious what the fuck you're doing dude why like 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 why? You know what I'm saying? You, but you guys were both like, I like that you said you're both pretty similar because from my vantage point where I'm like, I know both you guys from watching your videos and reading interviews and stuff like that. I, you're both like some of my favorite skaters. I like your skating. I like your approach. I like that you're both, some of my favorite skaters are outgoing that can express themselves and talk and don't hold back shit. And I definitely saw that. I see that in both you guys. And um, yeah, I just like, it's crazy that this, this all came out on my podcast, but I get to talk to you guys. So that's kind of cool still. Yeah, no, dude. And honestly, <laughs> dude, and I, dude, I, I actually fucking appreciate it. And, you know, I apologize. It hasn't come up before, but like I was telling you before, dude, I've been meant to do a goddamn podcast and show for like a fucking decade. And I'm just 
I just not a one man show. Right. So you told me how easy it is and I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? But that I've always wanted to be so perfect that I talk my shit out of it. It just never happened. But no matter when I fucking do it, my voice is going to be my voice. I have all my fucking stories. You know what I'm saying? It'll be with my girl and she's got her own fucking world. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be like real life type shit. You know what I mean? Um, But I like that. I appreciate I appreciate it. And honestly, dude. Hopefully we don't have to fucking deal with bullshit, but if we do, I'm not going to listen to it. I don't really care. But when you want me to come back and, and talk, because honestly, we only talked, dude, I only got to like 1992. Oh, so much more to skating. So much, re- so much dude, more. There's so much skating. And, <laughs> and I know that's what, that's what, that's what, that's what you really want. Like, you don't really want to be in like this fucking sentiment. And that's why I appreciate that you allowed me to get it off. Um, and fairly just right. You know what I'm saying? But, Whenever you're ready, dude. Like now, I know how fucking easy this shit is. Let me know, and dude, we'll bang it up. We will. I and I, it. I have an idea, though. We should bring back because everyone they're kind of doing this anyways in pop culture. Is they're bringing back celebrity boxing matches, but we should bring back like the Simon Woodstock. Like you guys should box this shit out. <laughs> yeah, you know it's funny. <laughs> that you know, that would be funny amazing. Fuck, you know it's funny when I called out fucking um. Because Ryan Hickey, he's a bitch too. When I fucking gave him some shit, I fucking I joked about that too. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he 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 was he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy too, right? He knew I was going to Japan, right? I'm all, I'm at the airport going to Japan. He's like, yo, man, I'm, I'm on Tenth Avenue, whatever. I knew you wouldn't fucking come, <laughs> dude. Are you kidding me, man? Like, I, are you kidding me, dude? You know what I mean? Like he's like, he's another fucking fraud, and it's a shame because I loved. Ryan, he, I, I love my New York days. Dude, I, I'm going to go on and on and on. We can talk about it another time. Yeah. But dude, dude, you know what? Fraud fucking people just need to go fucking eat a dick. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So look, leave it. Because I'm just going to keep on saying shit. It's only going to get worse. So no, you know I, what I mean? I so, you, I Before we go, uh, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. Dude, honestly, I, dude, I, I like I said, I, I never really, like, I, I haven't been on podcasts because I was always like, I have all this this shit and all this like info, all this juice, all these awesome stories, all real skate shit and all this stuff that I thought I would do it on my own. That so I, I really wasn't just not here, not there, right? Um, you know, so you know, I'm I'm sorry that I haven't been on it because I mean, dude, you're the man. Like honestly, like yeah, I mean, dude, I I wonder how many your fans know you, right? But think about all the people that don't know you. They have no idea what you did on those fucking red brick banks, dude. Like, that's outrageous. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, like, that man. is out. That is outrageous. As a, you've done. Not everyone gets the juice, right? What their skateboarding matches. You know what I'm saying? And, the, you know, there's fanfare. There's personalities and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, like look at fucking Jerry Fowler. Honestly, do you know how good that fucking dude is? So you know good. what I mean? So it, it's, it, he's he's so good. It's, it, I don't know, I don't know if he's still scared. I don't think much difference to me. But he's so fucking good. But you know, I mean, he's never gonna get to that upper echelon. I even know, dude. If you watch all the early four ones, do you know there's no one that has more fucking clips than Jerry Fowler? Oh, that's I fucked. Know. Yeah. No, that's fucked. I've been going through all of them for the research for the documentary, and I, Jerry Fowler, Jerry Fowler, Jerry Fowler. He was on rhythm. It 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 was it was gnarly. So he got juice, but obviously, if you're friends with the dudes who film and put him four and one you know because you saw all the same fucking dudes all the time you know what i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> but Hell yeah. not everyone you know what i mean like you're skating far exceeds the juice that you've ever got you know by far but i'm a skateboarder skateboarders know this stuff you know what i'm saying your average fucking people just don't know shit you know what i mean yeah and, man. and we don't we don't we don't need to worry about those people you know what i mean hell yeah all right cool thank you ricky thanks man yeah man have a good one